Welcome back to The Breakfast uh, from Tolkien, PSY and Gangnam Style and Snow White. Uh, now let's talk about issues here in Nigeria. And of course, uh, the oil marketers have uh, requested from the federal government to give them the permission to fix Nigeria's refineries. It's been a conversation that I believe a lot of Nigerians have, you know, asked themselves numerous times, even, you know, when the Dangote refinery idea, you know, was also uh, spoken. Enough. We this morning still have Liberos Oshoma here with us to quickly share his thoughts on this. Thank you so much for staying back and for joining us once again. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you. What, what's your reaction? Why is it coming now? Oil marketers saying that. Um, <laughs> That's my reaction. <laughs> it's a good one. <laughs> yes. Okay. You know because <laughs> these are stakeholders in the industry. Government had consistently, in one breath, say, government have no business in business. In another breath, you hold on tenaciously to the refineries. Yet you say, we can't fix them. There is no need fixing them. The way things are now, let's just forget about them. Let's do to it what we did to NITE. Even though with telecoms, with GSM, British Telecoms, BT, is still working to date. Yes. You know? So, is it that we are bereft of ideas or we really didn't know what to do? Rather than give NITE to people, serious-minded stakeholders. We, you know, packaged it and gave it to cronies oh. who cherry-picked the assets and left it, you know, empty. So now, with all of those funds, all of those assets wasted, so now we also want to waste the refineries. Where refineries became, you know, cash cow, slush funds for politicians. Turn around maintenance. If I'm in NMPC, I'm the presidency, I'm your, your friend, you're my friend, I want quick money, I give you a turn around maintenance contract. At the end, I turn around to say, oh, he couldn't turn around the maintenance. And so, but yet, nothing will happen to you. All the people who've given money to maintain the refineries, despite the fact that they are not working, we have not prosecuted any. And so, Sometimes we give licenses to import fair and then they will round trip and make so much money that to the extent I got to a point where prosecuting people for round tripping petroleum products. And so now that the stakeholders no, what do you have mean by round tripping, sorry. Quickly. You you you're given licenses to import. Mm -hmm. And so you take products, you go, you bring it back, and then you get payments for it. Even though you've collected the product from here, you didn't import nothing. Yes, it happened in this country. People are still in court to date. So, yes. it, so in you, some cases, the vessel you have already betted, you take you it, take it out down, again, you, you bring it back, back, and you are paid for it. Is that still operational now? No. Okay, that has been addressed. So because, because that had been addressed, and now it is only an MPC. Who's supposed to be a regulator? That is important. So, and that's why the independent marketers are telling you, look, if you're fixing price, fix for yours, don't fix for us. Because you can't say you have deregulated in one breath. In another breath, you are regulating price. It doesn't do, do, work. Do, do, do you believe that the so, marketers are able to buy the facilities as against and just so, fixing it? So, we're not talking about even buying. We're talking about concession. You know, let there be um, a, a partnership kind of arrangement, allow the marketers fix and run. We're happy, we are all waiting. In fact, if a, a country of 200 and something million people waiting for one refinery. Oh, when Dangote refinery comes upstream, when Dangote refinery comes upstream. Are we not ashamed? To the extent that we are even happy saying that we are signing an MOU to import fear from Niger Republic, a refinery of 20,000 metric uh, uh, ref, uh, 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 barrel per barrel day, per refining day. capacity of 20,000 barrel per day. Why are four refineries have a capacity of 445,000 barrel per day? And, and so, quickly, in why also government need to stop wasting money on these refineries for the year 2019 to June 2020? These are NMPC statistics, not mine. NMPC said they spent 142.1 billion naira 
on the four, uh, three refineries, Wari, uh, Potakot, and Kaduna, 142.1 billion. And that in the month, in one month, in one month of June, and mind you, for this year, none of the refineries refined one crude, one drop. And for the month of June, NMPC records says three refineries cost the country 10.23 billion in expenses. And according to them, there was no associated crude, crude plus freight costs for the three refineries since there was no production. And so, if you go further down, Worry Refinery cost us 2.68 billion, Portacourt 2.76. And Kaduna refineries, 4.979 billion. So, if you put all of this together, that is the 10.23 billion naira wasted. It's like pouring the money in a hole. We didn't refine nothing. So, the companies didn't make a dime right. and yet consume such money. So, if people are coming up now to say, look, we are players in the industry. So, allow us, allow us to um, um, repair the refineries, we use source of funds, we repair, we fix the refineries, and then we will refine product here since you're already buying it. And then the good thing is that you can still sell crude to them at international market price. So even if you sell to them at international market price, they're going, they going to make money because the cost of freighting out and freighting in would not be there because they have local uh, uh, refining capacity. Wow. And then they can refine here just the same way you have gone to Niger to sign MOU. They also can sign MOU with neighboring countries to supply them petroleum products. So, so what, what, um, I, what I need to understand is, because this, this is something that we've talked about for more than two decades now, um, the refineries that are just not working, just not refining anything. Um, not long ago, they shut all of them down. Uh, I think it was earlier this year or sometime last year. Um, if, if the Dangote himself and the Dangote refiner is given the clearance and given the license to go ahead and build and start production, what makes this one such a difficult um, go, um, thing, um, to thing to achieve? What, what makes it so difficult for, for oil markets in Nigeria to be given the same leverage, the same license? What, what, what they have done is you leave out the refineries, you create the refineries, okay, this is the refinery. They do not have storage capacity. They don't have control. Sorry, they don't have control over storage. They don't have control over marketing. They don't have control over pipelines. They don't, they don't also over have control over, they don't have control over crude supply. That is taken care of by different departments in NMPC. That's the Petroleum Product Marketing yes. Company. So the refineries are just there. If any day you bring crude, they refine. If you do not bring crude, it is there. So if the PPMC decide to take the crude abroad to refine, the refineries won't make money. And in some cases, just like we had with NEPA, you can supply crude, they can refine, and you're owing them the fund for refining. Meanwhile, the government has sold the refined crude and, and, and made money from it. So that's why it's always been like that. Coupled with the fact that NMPC is like an ATM for government. That's why every president that comes wants to retain that portfolio, Minister, Minister for Petroleum. Petroleum. Of and what relevance? End, sorry to, to shift the conversation, but of what relevance has um, President Buhari been the Minister of Petroleum been uh, since um, the onset of his administration? You because took it, it out seems of my that mouth. we keep to. You took it out of my mouth because that's what I'm saying. We had expected that being the president, the Minister for Petroleum, they always want to be Minister for Petroleum uh, against the backdrop, the belief that. Once the president is a minister for petroleum, he understands that industry because yeah, that's, but he, because you know, at, at so, the time he was the minister in his previous administration yes. asked and the military officer, he, he did brought, well. He he, they said he did well. How? That that was the argument. What it, with this now, what it has shown is the fact that who the person who was the president at that time was the person that actually wanted wanted wanting to do well and not a minister. So if the box stop at the table of the president and he says, "Look, we want to build a refinery." 
and so, and the mind of the countries that we must have a refinery, and the minister supervises. And then you eventually become president. And so it was in your time that these refineries was being built. You became minister, and the refineries that were built in your time as minister are all now moribund. None is working. You are not even talking about it. Even Ibe Kachuku, why was Ibe Kachuku appointed? Some of us said, look, the government just wanted to buy credibility with bright-minded people, not that they wanted people who actually wanted to work. And you and I also are, are aware of the letter, the famous letter written by Ibe Kachuku, former minister yes. for petroleum, who promised all of us that the refineries will work, all the refineries will work. In fact, the year he promised us that they will work, that year they didn't work at all. Uh, so None worked. The, the, he promised us that they will work by 19, 2019, they will all be working. What are the chances that and it so, will work before this but, administration But that's what I'm over. saying. So now that, and yet, that's the minister, the minister for state. He couldn't even assess his superior minister. And so the chances is that now the marketers are taking the bull by the horn and say, give it to us. Then, I, we'll I, I think I work. alluded to it earlier, even though you um, sort of didn't um, agree with me. They are saying that they have the capacity to buy the refineries from the government. Is that an option that we should be considering? We, we shouldn't be quick to offload our national assets. A buying should be off the table now. So that was how we didn't we send it to people who would have capacity. Because the moment you talk about buying, I can tell you that government will cherry pick people and they will sell it to those that do not have the capacity. Uh, uh, let me also you ask. Can, quickly, you yeah. can give a concession. You can give a concession with an option, with a clause that if you are not able to put it in place within so and so time, so the government has the right to revoke such concession. The, the we, government um, not long ago, um, ago also said that they you know, would be saving about one trillion naira um, um, after they remove subsidy and that, that one trillion naira annually I believe would be put into refurbishing the refineries. Um, do you see that happening in any way? The government has said, do you see it? <laughs> oh. See, it, it's sad. They, it's as if the government do not think when they make such statement. In one breath, like I started by saying, government says there's no, they have no business in business. In another breath, they said there's no need even putting more money on the refineries because there are alternative ways of doing it. They are even beating their chest and praising themselves now to say, oh, we have, you know, modular refineries, you know, refineries that you can increase the capacity as it comes. That's why it's modular. You know, you start small and then you begin to, ref you know, increase capacity. So to that extent, let's encourage modular refineries and not invest so much. And in another breath, you say you want to remove subsidy. You remove subsidy and then you retain the petroleum equalization fund. So that means the price to sell, you know, um, equally all over the country. You are the sole importer of the same product. And yet you say you want to save money. Then there must be magic somewhere. And then you are not considering the fact that now refineries for refining petroleum products it's gradually dying because what refineries such as ours are concentrating on now is petrochemical you know petrochemical products and no more uh, pms yeah. because now you have even we have commissioned a uh, um, uh, what do you call it uh, is it plant now to build you know commission cars you know battery cars so very soon or even we we are encouraging you know cars that do not run on fossil fuel. So if all of this is where the world is going to, we are not even thinking of moving our refineries from you know, refining a PMS to petrochemicals. Petrochemicals. Well, nobody is discussing all of this. We are still so when, we, when it hits us, that's why I call us a reactionary country. When it hits us, we now begin to react. Oh, what do we do now? And then gradually, we abandon the refineries. And then at that time, it will no longer be interesting. Just the way we abandon the coal industry. All right. I'm afraid that's it's the a, most it's, time it's, we'll permit us for the sad, segment. Sad, story. sad uh, very, very, very sad, sad reality in this country that we can't seem to get um, an oil producing country, but we can't seem to get the very basics right. I'm, get, I'm thinking that there is some politics to this that Nigerians don't know about. Whatever the politics is, it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not in the best interest of Nigerians oh, or the country not. itself. Thank you very much, uh, Liboris Oshima, for coming on the program. My pleasure.
Okay, we're going to break. When we come back, we will be talking something else. 2023 elections. Under eight girls to be considered as voters. Is that something Nigerians will accept? We have um, social commentator Ademiu Kunu and legal practitioner Chris Nwakobia joining us for that conversation after this break. <laughs> 